In this video I want to quickly talk about City Skylines 2 and whether or not it's worth upgrading um, and my general experiences after playing 25 hours of this game building this city called Funky Town. Now let's cut right to the chase. Uh, in my opinion if you haven't bought this game yet then you don't necessarily need to buy right now. I would rather, if you have City Skylines 1, keep that uh, with the mods, with all the DLCs, and you have a much deeper and richer game with many more possibilities than what City Skylines 2 offers to you. The reason for that is that City Skylines 2 um, is pretty much starting out like Sk City Skylines 1. Uh, that means there's not a lot of content, there are a lot of holes in the game, um, a lot of placeholders for DLCs and patches in the future. And it feels like a step back, honestly, if you are used to City Skylines 1 with all the DLCs and with all your favorite mods. Now, um, there are a few things that are nicer about City Skylines 2, um, but there are a lot of disappointments, uh, I would even call them, uh, when you compare the two. And I will get through the list um, real quick. Um, but yeah, if that's all you wanted to know, should I buy this game right now? Am I missing out? I would say, no, you don't. And so let's talk about the first, the first kind of problem or disappointment, which is, of course, the performance that uh, many people complained about and even Colossal Order and Paradox have acknowledged that they're not happy with. Now, it is especially bad because um, if you look at City Skylines 2 and you zoom in, of course, the higher 4K textures, they are better. You have a lot more detail. They look better when you zoom in and you have, yeah, just overall more stuff to look at in better resolution. However, I play city builders mostly from this kind of angle and from the top position. I move around, I rotate around, but I'm usually not that close. So I have to say, uh, it doesn't look that much better than City Skylines 1. It, it looks fairly similar. So if you just would go by visual improvements for the hardware performance that you or the penalty in performance, I guess, uh, that you have to invest, you don't get that much out of it. So, yeah, I really hope they they improve the performance. Um, and unless you're really zoomed in a lot of the times and you love looking at all the details and City Skylines 1 is just not doing it for you, then by all means upgrade for the details. But, uh, yeah, again, if you play like this most of the time, I don't think the performance penalty is really worth it. That being said, I have a 3080, I have a th um, 32 gigs of RAM uh, and I have an AMD 5900X, I believe. And I get like up to 60 frames per second for the most part. Although now that the city has grown, it's, yeah, you know, it, it, it's not super smooth scrolling around. And when snow is falling, uh, it's getting even worse. Which brings me to my first uh, kind of meh or disappointment or whatever you want to call it. And that is the weather. So it's nice to have seasons, but it would be nice to have the option to toggle them on and off because I play in the evenings usually and I have to look for half an in-game year uh, at a super bright and wide screen. I know some people ask for seasons and it's probably lovely to have that as an option similar to the day-night cycle, but I feel like the city looks super boring with all the white roofs and just overall it's just a flood of white and brightness. Um, so that this is not toggleable huge disappointment and the second uh, disappointment in a way is the map selection that you have when you start a new game because now you can't edit the climate or all these kind of options um, where they are located like if you what kind of seasons you have etc etc there's no map editor so you're stuck with the few maps that city skylines 2 
out of the box provides. And if you don't like snowy climates, then you have uh, probably one or two maps to choose from. So that's not really great as well. Um, now, the next disappointment would be the roads and the traffic system. So if you look at these roads, do they look really that much different to City Skylines 1? I would argue not. You have the same kind of roads, mostly. And honestly, building roads is not that much different. Sure, these guidelines that you get when building roads, they are super nice and helpful. And it's a welcome change to make nice looking grids and proportions and angles and all the, the rest of it. But when it comes to building like finicky, uh, sorry for that wild zoom, building like finicky kind of uh, roads, uh, overpasses, underpasses, and even railroads or rail lines, is that the right word? You know what I mean, these kind of things. Um, it's it's the same like City Skylines 1. It's just as finicky, if not more finicky in some cases. And the traffic AI doesn't feel that much more improved. Huge disappointment uh, in the roundabouts because they're the same kind of useless roundabouts that we had in City Skylines 1. Very limited and very rarely useful. The only good thing about them is that they by default get... Uh, yield signs in the right direction. You don't have to do that manually, but you still have to take off um, the, the zebra stripes or the, the, the p uh, pedestrian crossings. And this kind of roundabout, you know, I had to do myself again. And so since we don't have traffic manager as of the recording of this video, um, all of these roundabouts I had to craft by hand, making a cross, uh, curve the roads around it, make all the entry and exit roads. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I don't think that is really a big improvement. And if they improve the traffic AI or whatever the road building, the only thing that I really feel from that is this, the angles, the measurements, the elevation thingy. So, yeah and cars are despawning there's no way of turning car despawning off so eventually you, like i would say you don't really get super bad traffic jams every mm, traffic jam i've gotten thus far uh y you know i could manage i could fix i could uh oh, hello plane i could put a roundabout down and uh, you know mess with the traffic lights and stuff and speaking of this, uh, you can remove traffic lights and you can make stop signs and all these kinds of things and s prevent cars from going left or right on a particular street. However, you can't do it lane-wise. You don't, uh, you're not able to modify per lane whether or not this lane uh, can go left, right, straight, whatever. And yeah, that's again, very disappointing. Um, so when you do this, you have like a big main road and then there's a smaller ro road. You can remove the traffic lights and then the small road will get the yield sign. But uh, again, you can't say, okay, this should only be, you know, the left lane here should only be the left turn and the right lane should only be the straight on. So, you know, we still need traffic manager mods. Uh, I hope that will come. It can't come soon enough to make these roads a lot better. The move it mod would be still very much appreciated uh, to make the roads even better and nicer looking. And, you know, there's just a ton of stuff that if you really go into the details, that is just like not as good as City Skylines 1 with Traffic Manager and Move It mod. And yeah, overall doesn't feel like the next generation city builder in terms of roads and traffic. So I already mentioned it, the same applies to trains. Now you have to build these super large um, train yards and you have to hook them up to your network building railroads and rail networks is even more painful than it used to be um, and that is because now the underground view at least we can switch it easily here it, it, 
it, it's not very useful. Uh, for example, let's look at a subway station over here. There's one. Uh, you used to be able to look underneath very easily and see what's going on and who's going on that particular line. But now if we go back over ground, I mean, I can select the line, but you can't really see. So yeah, it's uh, it's actually not that easy to see. So uh, the one thing you can do is you can uh, go to subway and select the rails and then, man, no, not even like this. It's just, I don't know, it, it's worse than it was. And speaking of traffic, you also don't get to see in the info view um, where people are moving to and commuting to. You just see an overall traffic overlay. And again, this is worse than City Skylines 1 in some aspects, if not all. Next up, no bicycles. Come on, 2023. Uh, next generation city builder, no bicycles. And this ties into my suspicion that they just left all these holes for DLCs and patches to come later. But honestly, I, I'm, I'm very disappointed about this one. How can you make a city builder in 2023 without having bicycles in them and bicycle lanes and providing more means of making a greener, uh, less fossil fuel heavy uh, traffic kind of city, you know what I mean? This feels like, uh, yeah, kind of like when City Skylines 1 came out, like the state of the world. Uh, everybody's still running fossil fuel cars. You can have electric buses at least, bus, uh, at least. Uh, but yeah, the rest of it, meh. Next uh, disappointment. Um, it's the progression system. So the progression system is kind of neat because you now, sorry, that was the wrong button. You get like, uh, un, um, what is it called? Even development points uh, to unlock like kind of the tech tree and get certain things before other things. And you can, you know, choose your own kind of progression in, a, in that way. But, you know, I played 25 hours on the city. I have ridiculous amounts of money. I have uh, ever-growing city. And here is where the progression stops. Basically, from this point on, big city, you only get uh, development points and expansion points. You don't get any new unlocks. And, you know, I have pretty much everything developed like the only things I haven't unlocked are the ones that I don't care about here so yeah that's that so the progression system has a nice you know feeling to it however you you're you're at the end of the progression curve very quickly right now again DLCs will fill in those gaps but I feel it kind of unacceptable honestly to say this is City Skylines 2, build up all the hype and then it's like uh, you're basically worse off than City Skylines 1 uh, feature content depth wise. Now I will say the industry and how you manage your budget, that is actually something I do like. It is greatly improved. The UI is much nicer and better and you can see what your specialized industry is producing and what deficits you have. Um, it is also nice, you know, for some positives that now the water and electricity lines are just running automatically under the street and you have to not micromanage uh, laying water pipes, etc, etc. That's all nice, but you know, that's a, more like a quality of life improvement than like, you know, next generation city builder stuff and things. Um, and I guess lastly, uh, maybe, I think that's most of my disappointments so far, but city policies is just another big disappointment. Like this is all you get at the end of the progression curve right now. And um, if you make a district, let's quickly do one. Bam, 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 boop. And then we'll click here. This is all the district um, policies you can do. Again, uh, yeah, not that, not that exciting. Um, so delete that. Our 
So in summary, performance isn't great. Graphics are not mind boggling better. They're slightly improved. They have more detail, but uh, yeah, it doesn't look that much different to City Skylines 1. Traffic, roads and trains pretty much exactly as finicky as in City Skylines 1 and in some aspects even worse um, in terms of information you're getting. Um, progression system is slightly improved but feels super shallow because of all the gaps for the DLCs. Balancing is still miles off in many aspects, especially demand. I feel like also the industry and co commercial mechanics are not fully balanced i might be wrong i might it might be bugged and they probably will fix that before the first dlc so i'm not too concerned about that the ui looks nice but in some ways it makes it appear that the game mechanics are much deeper than they actually are right now you get less information in many of these screens some of them seem even i don't know not working they don't explain a lot of these game mechanics well, so you try and error stuff and uh, eventually you figure out something that works, I guess. Uh, policies, uh, districts, meh. Um, and yeah, non-toggleable snow and very small selection of maps. Overall, I would say if you own City Skylines 1, if you have all the DLCs you wanted, if you have traffic manager and maybe the move it mod and maybe realistic population, you're getting a much more complete and probably much better performing city builder that provides more gameplay. Um, this still needs, I think, at least half a year or a year, at least the first DLC. If the first DLC does not have bicycles in them, I'm actually mad. <laughs> I think I will not play this game before again before they put in bicycles. Um, I mean, I, I don't regret buying it. I still think if they put a new technology under the hood to make this game even more expandable and provide more access for modders to expand the game beyond what Paradox and Colossal Order are willing to do or wanting to do, that might all be justified, but it is not the next generation city builder. It is City Skylines 1 Remastered 1.5, whatever you want to call it. And that's fine with me. Uh, I don't think I wasted my money because I played the first game so much that they can have some extra money. And hopefully they use that money to make City Skylines 2 a lot better than it is currently. With that being said, thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.